Hi everyone, and thanks for joining me again for another discussion. And today I'm going to be talking about death and grief. And this discussion is going to be on responding to death and grief. And of course, I've personally experienced a lot of loss, family members, friends, my husband, I, you know, I've experienced quite a bit of loss. And, and in that, I've had a number of people who have uh, friends and family who have done their best to try to be there for me and not always saying the most appropriate things, but not because they knew better and chose to say something that may not be helpful. And, and I want to make it clear that this discussion is not to make anyone feel bad. This, I, I don't want to discuss this topic in an effort to have anyone feel in hindsight, you know, looking back at things they may have said, and I'm guilty of it as well, you know, having said things to individuals that I was, with all the best intentions, trying to help and trying to, um, in any way that I thought I could ease their pain. And so I'm going to be kind of um, diving in a little bit on that topic. And I did recently share on social media something that I had written in my journal uh, about this topic. So I will read that in, in this discussion as well. And I just want you to know that this video that I'm making right now on this topic is only with the intention of helping those of you who may be in a position currently. A lot of people are, are passing in our lives, especially those you know that, that are at my age and older and and then also due to COVID. So hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully this will be food for thought and you can kind of reflect, self-reflect on what may be an approach. You know, I'm not saying I have all the perfect answers, but I don't believe there are perfect answers that can be um, painted with a broad brush across all situations. But hopefully this will help. That's that's my intention for making this video. So I'm going to go to a reading from my journal that I did share, like I said, recently on social media. And I'll read that and then I'll pick back up with discussion. So this is what I actually wrote. These are the words that I wrote when I shared on social media. So I'm going to read it just exactly as I wrote it then. And it starts, I'm going to share something I've shared in grief groups below. Please know that when any of my friends and family have done this with me, I've only ultimately come to have received and appreciated it in love and understanding, and understanding the pure intent to provide comfort to me. It's just that in our society, we aren't taught how to deal with death. And so we resort to what we've heard imparted from others, again, with only the best intentions. People in their sincere and heartfelt desire to comfort those who have lost loved ones will often say, he or she is right there with you, or they are always with you, etc. For those who have not been back through the veil or had the call of transcendent experience of remembering, my heart truly aches for and with you. And I'm, I'm fortunate in that I have been through the veil and that I do know on a higher level of spiritual understanding that it is true that they are with us. However, in the duality of this matrix, and as a human being, I still long for the physical touch, the embrace of a tight hug, the kiss on the forehead or cheek. Excuse, excuse me, it still touches me. The passionate kiss, making love, the ability to demonstrate in this earthly vehicle, those feelings of love through human contact with those who I so desperately miss. So as you can see, I obviously still get a little emotional when I'm, when I'm reading that and it's because it's so true. And oftentimes we do, and I've said it, I've told people, you know, that they're all around you. They're always with you. They're watching over you. Things like that, that we think are comforting words. But the truth is it's very dismissive and it's, it's, easy to say and 
and think that we're imparting words of wisdom or imparting some deep spiritual um, understanding that we believe will be helpful. We, we truly intend to, to be helpful when we say these things. But the reality is, when we when we lose loved ones and we lose those who are so close to us and we can't have that physical contact with them any longer we can't sit with them and watch a show on TV and laugh together and feed off of one another's laughter sure we we can believe and know that they are with us on on a spiritual plane but we're still physical and they're not so it's so important to remember that when we're trying to comfort those who have experienced loss because they're feeling it in such a visceral way when when they sit down on their sofa or lay in their bed at night or go for a drive in territory that they're used to sharing with the loved one the person that's lost, whether that be a spouse, a child, a friend, there's that sense of longing to, to, to have them there. There's that sense of wanting to be able to hold them, to be able to reach out and touch their hand, to be able to feel that kiss on the forehead, the kiss on the cheek. You know, those things are they're missed terribly so it's really important to remember that when we impart what we believe are words of comfort and support that we that we're not invalidating the depth of pain that they're actually feeling what I've come to learn and I've said this many times and I'll probably say it in many videos that I record moving forward my experience with losing Lee, my husband, is that it's it's been painful, but it's been beautifully painful and it's been painfully beautiful. And that's that comes with the understanding that you can't feel pain on that deep of a level without having haven't haven't having experienced love on such in such depth also. It's the two sides of the coin. The greater the, the love, the greater the pain. And so there is a sense of gratitude for being able to feel the pain, the pain that I feel now. There's, there's a sense of gratitude that I had what results in this level of pain. I, I will be forever grateful for that. So I think that's that's something that is good to know and understand. And most importantly, it's not what we can say. We're always so focused on, you know, what are the right words to say? I've had many people come to me um, now that they see me moving through my um, healing process and they've asked me, you know, knowing people who have lost loved ones, and they say, can you give me words to impart? What, what you know, help? Help enlighten me with what words I can say that that may be meaningful and helpful to my my friend or my family member. And really what's most important, you know, it's great that people want to do that. I love that people are are seeking advice, they're seeking out because they, they realize they don't know. They don't know what to say. And really there is no right thing you can say. You may say something with all the best intentions. And it may trigger a negative response or what appears to be a negative response because of the pain, because of the, the suffering, the grief that people are experiencing. But it's not so much having the right words. Really, that's not important at all. Having the right words, you, you probably won't. Most likely you won't. So don't try. What I think, what I think is most important is having an open ear and having an open shoulder. That's what's important. If you tell these these friends, family members that are experiencing grief from loss, if you just tell them, I'm here to listen and I love you, it's truly the best you can do. 
tell them, my shoulder is here for you. My, my door is open to you. If you want to come cry, come cry. But don't listen with the intent to respond. Just listen. Just be there. Love them. And now that it appears things are opening up as COVID is moving behind us, hopefully it, it appears to be. Let them hold them, hug them. Listen to them. Look at them. Make eye contact with them when they talk to you. And when they cry, let them cry. Don't worry about what am I going to say next? What's my response going to be to this? It is awkward. It's hard. We don't know what to do. I've experienced so much loss and I still struggle with helping others with loss. I've, be, I've learned to become a listener. And if someone wants to ask me a question, they can ask me a question and I'll do my best to answer, but I'll first let them know that I don't claim to have the answers because I'm not in their shoes. Every situation is so unique. Grief is so unique to each individual. You know, each, each one of us walks a pathway that is so unique. So anytime any one of us claims to have all the answers for everyone and we try to paint with a broad brush, we're not doing a service to, to anyone else or ourselves. So I'm gonna read something else that I, that I also shared in a grief group on uh, social media. You know, I try to be actively involved and it's been a part of my healing process too. It has helped me. And um, I'm, so I'm going to um, read that right now and, and I'll see, I may uh, elaborate on it a little bit. I'm not sure. I, I may read it and, and then sign off. So this is a Facebook post on, it's called uh, Grief Speaks Out page where people share posts about how they're dealing with moving through uh, grief, the process of grief. And I saw a post and, and I was reading comments on the post and it really touched me. So this was my response. This was a comment that I posted. I'm reading the comments here and I feel compelled to share. It's been approximately 15 months since my husband passed and I still cry every day. I've become accustomed to doing so, and I believe it's probably that I'll continue to do so for the remainder of my life. From a standpoint of a spirit being having a human experience, as Ram Dass and later Wayne Dyer put it, I understand the brevity of this illusion that we call life. I've mentioned on this page and to this community before that I've been fortunate in having had the experience of crossing through the veil and coming back. In doing so, I remembered from which we come and the home to which we return. I remembered from which we come and the home to which we return. What seems so long and painful now is but a very brief moment in the illusion of time, and you will be reunited with those you miss and love so desperately. I chose suicide in my grief. I survived, and now I believe I'm meant to support and encourage others in their time of deep sorrow. Nothing I or anyone else can say or do will take away the hurt you feel in your heart, every fiber of your being, and in your soul. I know and understand this all too well. But please know that you are not alone, and that in the depth of pain you feel... I'm sorry. Please know that you are not alone, and that the depth of pain you feel is in direct correlation to the love you have for your loved one. A love you came here to experience and a love that transcends this illusion of time and space. It is a love that is truly eternal and you will enjoy it on a level you cannot comprehend in this physical existence, in this human form. I feel the pain when I read your words, but I also see and feel the love behind the pain. Sorry. 
We are in this together, and I'm sending great big loving hugs of understanding. So, when I wrote that, I just wanted people to know, and those viewing this, maybe you're suffering grief right now. You're not alone. And it's normal. It's not depression. It's grief. It can be depression. It can start off. I know for me it started off as a very deep, severe depression. And as a society, we look at depression as an illness and as a weakness. And, and it's also not, it's not a weakness. Depression is not a weakness. Depression um, is a natural response to to traumas, sometimes traumas from our childhood. And many people do suffer. It's very real. It is very real. I'm very fortunate in that I, I have not suffered depression. I have family members who, who did and who are no longer with us. But um, so I understand depression is very real. But then I also understand grief. And grief is a direct response to the trauma of the loss. And it's also a response to, to the loss itself and to that longing to be able to be with those that we miss. But it's a very real process. There is no time limit. There is no right or wrong way to grieve. So if you're grieving, please know that it's okay. Please know that it's actually healthy. It's okay to cry. That's why I, I honestly thought about editing out my emotions You know, when I, when I cried in this um, making of this video thought about editing this out but I don't want to because it's very real again I'm so grateful that I can feel this pain and this grief on such a deep level I'm so grateful it's a testament to the love that I've experienced in my life I've experienced an incredible amount of love I'm so lucky I'm so fortunate to have had so much love and I'm coming out through, you know, the dark night of the soul that I've mentioned in previous videos about shadow work. I'm coming out, I'm seeing light at the end of the tunnel myself. And I'm recognizing that I'm still here, you know, I'm still in this life. And I participated recently in an, another medicine ceremony where the shaman told me specifically that I needed to stop focus on dying and start focus on living very true the words were very timely and and i am and there is still love to experience and i hope by sharing these videos that i'm that i'm making now i'm i'm sharing love it, it does it gives me a, a sense of purpose it makes me feel like i'm doing something that hopefully is beneficial and helpful to others and i know a love so deep both from my experience in this life and from my experience of passing through the veil and returning, dying and returning, medicine ceremony, which I'll put links in the comments below or in, in the description below. I'll put links so that if you just caught my video now, this is your first time watching my video, you can hop over and check out my other videos where I do talk about how medicine ceremony saved my life, literally. And uh, please feel free to subscribe. I'm going to be talking about a number of topics. So feel free to subscribe, follow along. You can click the bell and it'll notify you anytime I upload a new video. So that's my discussion on grief for now. I uh, don't know if I'll make another one and elaborate more, but that's, I hope you find this helpful. And I truly love each and every one of you. I truly, truly, truly love each and every one of you. I recognize that we are all one another, that, that you are me and I am you. And I, if you watch other videos, that'll make more sense, I think. 
but I love you and and thank you for watching and I, I do hope this helps directly and indirectly in helping others thank you